we do have our champion for the Asia Southeast region, Brandon. Is he actually the yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, that jersey is so clean. First and, and foremost, I, 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 I do want to say, man, yo, you're Luke. Does mad damage, man. It was <laughs> so congrats, good. Yo. It, it was so good. Like, your Luke play was immaculate the entire time, and I just love that you are really emphasizing the power of the character. Mm -hmm. When I see that character being played, you gave a textbook Luke performance. One of the questions I kind of want to start off with, first and foremost, uh, welcome onto the broadcast, of course. Going up against SKZ in your top eight run, that was our highlighted match. As soon as that match was over and you saw the rest of your path, what was your mindset after? Uh, firstly, before I answer that question, I need Luke. <laughs> <laughs> then, um, I think I, I wasn't really too bothered about like how my bracket would pan out because like in terms of my personal condition, like I'm playing at a level where I know that if as long as I don't choke, you know, I should do fine in the tournament. So I had a lot of strategies prepared beforehand and uh, I just uh, executed everything uh, according to plan and thankfully it worked out. Yeah, talking about having that game plan, we got to see you really shine in those positions where the game plan just kept seeming to work out every single time, whether it be against SKZ and Bells, and then finally against Lacuna C. And I know Lacuna C was actually the closest to pushing it over the edge and getting that reset. So at that point when uh, Lacuna C had that lead, what was your mindset and how did you, I would say, recover to regain momentum? And then ultimately in that last game, you you did you did kind of steamroll him. Um. I think it was like the last game and the first round where he had the lead on me. But I wasn't too worried yeah. at that position because I had like full CA. So the although he had the lead, it was kind of like a one-touch kill situation. So I was just patiently waiting for an opportunity to get that one-touch situation and just uh, kind of close it out. I wasn't like too worried and just, I was like, just wait for a mistake. Wait for something. He will, for sure he's going to make a mistake. I'm like, Dude, he's going to make a mistake. He's going to make a mistake. And he did, thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just how the, the dice roll goes sometimes, right? Right. When it comes to this stage of the game, the nerves do kind of add up. That mental stack is something that's really emphasized mm -hmm. towards the later end of like some of these bracket runs. But I do want to mention, um, even prior to top eight, like you were looking at like your path into top 16. How many of these players have you fought off against on a daily are a very common occurrence. Like, how often have you gone through uh, the players that you've seen in the top 16? Um, this may be a bit weird to answer, but actually, like, I sort of exiled myself from Southeast Asia for four months. Wow. So, the, ever since, like, you know, the CPT online started, a lot of the tournaments are obviously regional. And uh, there's going to be a lot of playing on tendencies, playing on habits. So I did my best to avoid all these by practicing with other players. I mean, like, if I'm gonna have a shout out to someone who had like the biggest help on me, I have Oil King. Like Oil King has been such a Ooh. big help to me. Like he has been practicing with me under the shadows for like four months. <laughs> and uh, of course, like I circled around like um, several different players, uh, maybe like 15 to 20 of them uh, from all over Asia, except Japan and Korea. So that was kind of the way I prepared for the match. So if you ask me, like, how often do I play these players? Actually, not at all. Wow. That's pretty impressive, yeah. Yeah, I really like the way you approach that because I think it's important to, you go in with a clean slate of mental stack because you're not focusing on the player, you're focusing on the matchup at hand, which puts you to a level playing field of, oh, well, I'm thinking about this tendency, but what if, they know that you know that you're looking for that tendency. Which so. is something to say, especially when he had his quote, when you had your quote against SKZ, when you're like, I think he's going to go pretty ham on me. That was actually a miraculous or like a pretty immaculate read, just, yeah, just he, to put that out there. He, he, <laughs> he did uh, go beyond ham, but you were able to uh, handle that excellently. And uh, the next question that I wanted to ask was, first off, if you are going to EVO, what are your expectations? And how are you looking for different regions to perform there? Because obviously there are heavy expectations for the West, there's heavy expectation expectations for Asia, there's heavy expectations for Europe, but there can only be one victor. 
uh, firstly, I'm unfortunately not going to Evo because uh, for most of the, uh, well, I speak for the rest of Southeast Asia, but most of us here don't really have a lot of uh, annual leave and we do have full-time jobs. So going to the far states would easily like eat up maybe like four to five working days of our leave and generally most of us on average have in between 14 to 16 days of leave so you can kind of imagine like for full time like for full time uh how do you say sorry my bad um if you have a full time job <laughs> yeah. you know, it's it, you only can travel to the states like three times and you just totally exhaust your leave and uh as most of you know that i actually got uh, married last year oh, so I'm saving a lot of my leave for honeymoon yeah. this year in, honeymoon this year in Switzerland so that's oh, really cool. sick that's so, uh, so unfortunately I won't be going to Evo but um, you know our um, best player and representative of Southeast Asia Razor Sien he will be going to Evo and I hope you know he goes as far as he can and hopefully win the tournament that's a spoiler alert, man. You got to tag those, brother. I didn't know that. No, I'm just kidding. I, I, had, a, I had a pretty good idea. Um, this is going to be pretty much your moment to shine. Is there anything you would like to slay, uh, say? Actually, you already slayed the rest of the competition. Is there anything you would like to say as your closing remark and uh, what we can expect from you at Capcom? Um, two things. Uh, one would be, you know, it's my first time actually calling, qualifying for Capcom Cup. And uh, I've actually never had the opportunity to play with Punk. I've played with like different players like Problem X and of course the best in uh, the best in Asia. I really hope that Punk will be there so that I can just like have some games. It's okay if he smokes me. I just want to feel the pain. You know. That, Word. That's the yeah. Wow. And um, secondly, of course, I would like to give a shout out to my sponsors, Cine Sports and and Monster. You know, keeping me all the way through. Um, and uh, I'll do my very best to prepare for Capcom Cup and enjoy the rest of the World Warrior season. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I absolutely love that. And thank you so much for um, everything that you've talked with us today. Thank you so much for showing us our play. I know you were talking about if Punk washes you, it'll be okay. But you pretty much washed the rest of the competition. So I would give yourself a bigger pat on the back. You're going to give him uh, more of a fight than you would expect. And thank you for... Uh, showing us some of the Street Fighter action that your region has to offer. And we very much appreciate both your play and uh, taking the time to talk with us. So Thank congratulations much, uh, once again. You.